Today I show you how you can create 3D models from scratch with an AI tool called Rodin and how you can import and use 3D models in the Fusion page. A quick disclaimer, Demos Tech, the creators behind Rodin, asked me to review it and sponsored this video. So let's get started by creating our 3D model. You can take an image and upload it or if you don't have an image, you can just put a description in this text box and then it will automatically generate images for you. You can cycle through them until you find one which you like. In my case, I want to generate a pirate book with a skeleton skull on it. So let's click accept and then generate. After waiting half a minute, this window will open up with a preview of the 3D model. But in this case, I think the 3D model isn't what I was looking for. So I can hit redo. This time it generated a way better model. Because I'm happy with this result, I can hit the confirm button. And on the confirm button, there are a few extra options. For example, this hyper option, which results in a better quality. Then you have to choose if it's a symmetric model or not. In my case, it's a book. It's almost symmetric, but it's not completely symmetric. So I won't click symmetric. After giving it a few seconds to generate, we can do the next step, which is generating a material. So we could choose another image, but I will leave the image as our original book. And let's hit generate. And if we don't like the material, we can also redo the generation just as with the 3D model. But I like this texture, so let's leave it and hit generate again. And now we can already download our finished model. If we have a look in the download folder, we can see there are a few files. There's one file for the 3D model, and then there are another few files, which are for the materials. We start by dragging the base FBX model into our fusion composition, and then we will connect it to a renderer 3D. Next, we can connect this renderer 3D to the media out. Now we can see there's this white image and that's because our FBX model is way too big and doesn't have any textures yet. So let's add another node, merge 3D node, and connect it between the renderer 3D and the FBX mesh. Then with the merge 3D selected, click on the one on your keyboard to make it visible in the viewport. Now, if you scroll out by pressing control and using a scroll wheel, you can see our model is already there, but with no textures and it's way too big. So let's add a camera 3D and connect it to the merge 3D. Now we have a way to scale things and we can just use the camera and pull it back. Like this. Next, we will connect the textures to our FBX mesh. We will start by dragging in our diffuse texture into our node graph. And if we connect it right to the FBX mesh, you can see it already works and we can see our textures. But now there's not any other option to connect the other materials. So we will delete this again and we will get a cook torrents node. Now let's connect this cook torrents mode to our FBX mesh. And now we can take the diffuse texture and put it into the cook torrents. Then we will take the normal texture. And if we have a look at this, it's this, uh, it's this map with a little bit of elevation and it's in this blue style. And we can't connect it directly to this. This won't this won't work. So we need to get a bump map, connect this into the bump map, then use your right mouse button, not the left mouse button, and drag this onto the cock turns node. Then there's this window, which pops up and you can select bump map material. Great. Now let's start to rename these so we don't get confused. This was our diffuse. And this is our normal. 
Next, we will get a roughness texture. Let's rename it. And with the right click, drag it onto the cook torrents. Select roughness material. Then let's get the texture PVR. And this time there is no texture PBR on the cook torrents if you look at this because the texture PBR is the specular color material. So click this one. Next we have the metallic. Let's drag this in here. Right click. And the metallic is the specular intensity material. And now we already connected all the materials to our FBX mesh. Now we can adjust our scene. So let's move this a little bit back here. And I will add a spotlight to the scene. Let's connect this to the match 3D node. And now the spotlight is in the middle. And before we move it, let's go to the inspector and under transform, click this use target. This makes sure that our spotlight always faces our target, which is in this case at 000, where our book is located. Now we can take the spotlight and move it around. And as you can see, it always faces the target, but nothing has changed. The reason for this is in this viewer, the 3D viewer, you can right click 3D options, show lighting. Now this lighting from the spotlight is visible, but it's still not visible on the media out. And that's because you need to click on the renderer 3D and enable lighting and shadows. And now let's maybe move the light to the front and let's change under the controls. I will decrease the cone angle. And the penumbra angle, I will increase. This makes the edges a little bit softer. Let's play around with this. For example, like this. Then I will add a directional light. And this time I will use this and let's go to the transform and use target again. And now I will drag it behind our book and a little bit to the right. Under the controls, I will change the color to a yellow tint. So it looks like it's from a campfire or candles or something like this. Then press OK. And this is already it. You now are able to move things around in the 3D viewer. Um, if you want to animate things, for example, the camera movement, you can do it just as in 2D space. Pick a point in the timeline, make a keyframe, pick another point and adjust the keyframe. For example, let's move the camera a little bit away like this. If you like this tutorial, you may like others from my channel as well. So make sure to subscribe and feel free to check out the links in the video description. See ya.